All right, Vice President Kamala Harris is taking a break from the campaign for a sit down on the hard hitting view. There, the VP shared how frightening the thought of former President Trump returning to the White House is. Watch. We've got a guy right now, the, the, the former president, running for office, openly saying that he promises to essentially be a dictator, right. a person running to become the commander of ch in chief, who is admitting he would weaponize the Department of Justice. Uh -huh. Now, are, are you scared, first of all, what could happen if Trump ever became, God forbid, president again? And what are you going to do to stop the crazies? I am scared as heck. Uh -huh. <laughs> so on all of those points, yes, we should all be scared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as we know, and certainly this is a, a table of very powerful women, we don't run away from something when we're scared. We fight back against it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, here we go. Kaylee, hard-hitting questions and the usual intellectual answers, but the point is the messaging that keeps getting hammered, which is abject fear. Right, and this is a repeat of the 2020 strategy, which is to fearmonger about another Trump presidency, to claim that democracy as we know it is going to end. And quite honestly, this is the only strategy that is available to them. They can't run on Joe Biden because he's not getting any younger and his wife already has to do weekly media tours to remind everyone that he's still alive. They can't run on his policies because his policies have tangibly made Americans' lives worse in more that ways than one. So this is what's left. They have to run on Trump. The problem with this strategy, though, is that Democrats are kind of becoming the boy who cried wolf too many times. We remember what a Trump presidency was like. We lived through it. Democracy did not end. The world was much safer. The economy was much better. So to fearmonger about the return of Trump just is not hitting with Americans anymore because they look back at four years ago and they think, you know what, actually that wasn't so bad. Yeah. And Kaylee, all right, so aside from visits to the hen house, Kamala seems to be hitting the <laughs> same note over and over again. Yes, yeah, she does. Let's watch it. Most people don't think of it in the context of democracy as much as freedom. The mm. freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body. The freedom to have access to the ballot. I travel our country and I have been in states that have banned access to reproductive freedom, to abortion. They're concerned that if their daughter is going to college, will she go to a state where she will have access to the health care she might need, including reproductive health. If she chooses, she will talk with her priest, her pastor, her rabbi, her imam. But it should not be the government telling her what to do. We are not asking anyone to abandon their personal beliefs. Right. It's just that the government should not, in, in this year of our Lord, 2024, mm -hmm. the government should not be telling women what to do with their bodies. So this was fascinating, and I'll get to abortion in just a moment, but I disagreed with almost everything she said in this interview. I will say it was one of her better interviews when it came to style. She's been clearly doing some sort of media training, and she's been deployed to hit three buckets. Progressives, where she has more credibility than Joe Biden. She did that today. She talked about Israel and Gaza. Young people, she's been going to campuses. She hit that today in this interview. She talked about, she literally said, I love Gen Z, I love Gen Z, kept bringing up student loans. And then women, she's on a show whose audience is mainly women. You just saw it. She brought up abortion again and again and again. Even when she was given low-hanging fruit, she was asked about January 6th and 91 indictments against Trump. She pivoted right back to abortion because she knows what is true, which is the GOP has lost every single abortion ballot initiative post row, every single one. Ohio, Kansas, not only that record turnout, Vox, more Kansas voted on abortion referendum than in any primary election in Kansas history. New York Times, twice as many people voted on Ohio measure that cast ballots in primaries for governor, Senate, and House. She knows abortion ballot initiatives will be on 10 states at least and swing states. So she wants to drive young women to the polls. This is why I've implored the GOP as someone who is pro-life myself and adamantly so, speak from a place of compassion, which I've been watching Governor Ron DeSantis, he has, he talks about hearing his daughter's heartbeat, and not only that, speak to be pro-mother, not just pro-baby, pro-mother. And Governor DeSantis, his last interview, he said, I made child care products tax-free in the state of Florida. I am going to be an advocate for maternal health care. We as a party must do that, because what Kamala is doing, right or wrong, is very powerful among young women. 
And David, let's take a listen or watch to how the vice president defended or explained the president's mental acuity wrapped up in the age question. People are uh, saying that Biden is too old. We hear it constantly. I, I, I've met him many times. He seems very robust. He told me he works out every day. The other side seems doddering to me. He's eating cheeseburgers. He's overweight. He's always in a golf cart. I mean, <laughs> why is Biden getting the bad rap and not Trump? Well, first of all, let me just address the issue directly, I, because I spend a lot of time with our president, be it in the Oval Office, the Situation Room, you name it. We have a president in Joe Biden who is forward-thinking in a way that we've not seen in a long time. So why are they doing it, Joy? Why? Yeah. Because they have nothing yes. to run on. Thank you. They have nothing to run on. That's right. Mm -hmm. Where's the plan? All right, so the only thing I'll agree with when it comes to her is that there's media training involved. There is no she's pathway. pivoting back. She's doing, but if you look at the things she says, first of all, do you really believe that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are in the situation room every day? They're putting yeah. all the buzzwords in there. First of all, there hasn't been a situation that really has required them to be in the situation room maybe every week, maybe once every couple of weeks. The fact is this is a media put up minus the word salad. And his age is an issue with most Americans, not out of any ageism or anything that they want to put on it, but the fact that it's his competence or lack of competence. When you have someone who's addled, when you have someone whose wife has to go on the media tour to tell you how vibrant he is, he works out every day, he can't ride a bike without falling off of it. I mean, the American people see this, and for better or worse, the American people have to make a decision based on the person in the job and their ability to perform because that comes right back to every one of us. So she's doing a good job. I'm going to... I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going to say the media trainings worked because of the lack of word salad. But and Frank, laughing and the cackling. And the laughing and the cackling. But Fra what did you call them? Hen house. The hen house. <laughs> In the hen house, how could one other hen get it wrong? All right, guys. My favorite part of this segment is now the Dean Phillips campaign ad. Let's take a watch. Cheryl will get a reaction on the other side. <laughs> I thought I was good at hiding. So I asked around, have you seen Joe? I mean, how can you have tens of thousands of people looking for you all the time and not one person find you? I looked for him everywhere, even the Democratic primary debate. No, Joe. Oh, and, I know, that's great. No, it's, here we go again. That is Biden, great. Biden in the basement. That's going to be the campaign strategy. It is obvious. That's you, know, you mentioned, of course, Jill Biden going on MSNBC. Uh, you know, the surrogates, they're putting Kamala Harris out there. For, and again, I thought she did a nice job today with the media training, but yeah, it, this is gonna be their strategy because he's not performing well. He has aged in office, but that's what, at least, at least it's being addressed. And I will say, hats off to the V, at least they brought it up. They addressed it directly. She skirted around the issue, of course she did, but you are now seeing what the campaign strategy is gonna be. It's gonna be Kamala, it's gonna be Jill Biden, Mayor Pete's gonna start rolling around again. Uh, so, well, yeah. and by the there way, <laughs> the fact that Bigfoot Dean Phillips is now at 28% in the New Hampshire polls tells me that there is an appetite among Democratic voters for an alternative option. So why won't the Democratic Party give it to them? That's right. right. And the difference between now and then is that it's not candidate Biden, it's President Biden. And when everyone in America is looking for your president, that's a problem. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.